Hey everyone, I'm fascinated by architecture. It makes us stop, observe and think. Sometimes I look at a particular architecture and wonder why they built it the way that they did. Why this Japanese architecture? Why is it built a certain way? How is it different from the way the Chinese used to build their buildings? You could say it was because they had highly developed and formalized schools of architecture. But what about the unique architecture which does not have formal schools of thought? How can we explain the architecture developed in the absence of architects? For example, why do the Mishing build their houses on stilts? Why do the Kachi nomads build round bhungas to live in? And why do the Mao Nagas carve skulls and bisons onto the facades of their homes? They are all practicing a form of architecture called vernacular architecture. Vernacular architecture develops as a response to the climate, culture and materials that are found in a region by a particular set of people. So is it true? Did the Nagas mount skulls on the facades of their houses? Let me clear it. No. This practice is no longer continued in these regions. But if we were to look at the culture, climate and materials that the Mao Nagas used, then we could come close to an answer as to why they built the way that they did. Who are the Mao Nagas, first of all? The Mao Nagas are a group of ethnic identity who belong to the tribe of Nagas. They call themselves Meme or MMA and are mostly settled in the states of Nagaland and Manipur. They have a rich, diverse and long history and the members of the tribe today strive to continue keep up the customs that they used to follow once. But the culture of the Mao Nagas has undergone three major phenomena that has changed the way they build and changed what they believe in. They are the importance of Mithun in Naga cultures, the advent of Christianity in the Mao Naga regions and the overall changes in the Mao way of life today. Let us start with the Mithun. The Mithun is an animal found especially in these regions, also known as Gail or Wei in the local dialect. It's the state animal of Arunachal Pradesh and Nagaland and is a highly prized possession in terms of livestock. In Naga cultures, a man who possesses a lot of Mithuns is accorded a higher status in his society. But Wealth and status in the Naga culture is not based on possession alone. A respectable member of the Naga tribe is expected to host multiple feasts of merit which will accord upon him the right to bear ornaments, multiple levels of social merit and good social standing in his tribe. The delicacy to be served in these feasts of merit is the meat of Mithuns. Hence Mithuns are reared primarily as a ritual sacrificial animal in these regions. Upon hosting multiple feasts of merit, the family finally gets the right to bear ornaments on its house as a sign of its social merit in the form of horns or kikai as they are locally known. They may also display the skulls of these Mithuns which were sacrificed at the Feasts of Merit as a display of their social merit. Before we can talk about the changes that have occurred today in the culture of the Mao Nagas, we need to find out a bit more about what was practiced in the past. Let's listen here to a modern performance of a folk song that talks about the founding of a Mao Naga village. Please pay attention to the lyrics because they may hold some answers 
to the questions we are asking. Hey. ตาหูตูบะยะกานกันตูบะยะกรูเจชินะฮะอเมริกันกะไปบูจีบองนะมาคนนะฮิดมดาอัสซัมตะกาบลิมมายังลัมงันยะบูฮาวันเตเลวง
because they no longer believe in the same things anymore. But this is not a cause of sadness. There are so many more questions we could ask about the interesting vernacular architecture practiced by the Maonagas. But I will leave you here with a rendition of a Naga folk song performed for us very kindly by an elder from the village of Kalinamai. Thank you.